David for the sake of my family thou son of David for the sake of the divine mandate upon my life visit me tonight give me an encounter hallelujah exalted high above the worship of the people love to hear I see the Lord I see the Lord for my eyes have seen the King you're the Lamb upon the throne who reigns forever please be seated God bless you in the name of Jesus Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 we have a very brief session Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 now please I'd like you to listen carefully and I pray and hope that you have something to write because everything that is of worth is worth penning down is worth writing it says right for these words are faithful and true Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this was at a time in the life of Joshua where Moses had died and the baton of leadership had been handed over to this young man Joshua he was not used to what he was about to do until that time it was Moses who had led over 2.5 million people from Egypt the land of slavery the land of captivity and their destiny was to go to a land flowing with milk and honey but for some reason Moses was not able to finish up the assignment and the baton was given to Joshua Joshua like any other person was afraid confused and wondering if he would be able to not only handle that baton but to handle it effectively and then the Lord gave him a set of instructions and one of them tonight will be the basis for a brief discussion and then we pray Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 here's what it says this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success if that is you say amen so God himself is giving Joshua the formula to not only be successful but to be successful in an exceptional way please listen to me very carefully everyone in Christ everyone in Christ has an enviable destiny a destiny of color a destiny of grace the Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord. It says they are thoughts of peace. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. And not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. The Bible also says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. Are we still together? In Deuteronomy chapter 28 when you read from verse 1 and 2 it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon you and overtake you 
there are no low callings in Christ everybody in Christ is a high flyer everybody in Christ is a champion regardless your background regardless what happened or what did not happen so I want to establish tonight that there is no one sitting under the sound of my voice who is number one a biological accident number two a failure every one of us who names the name of Christ has been called into the kingdom of victory are we together until you believe this you will never truly be able to succeed he said son of man what seest thou and he said I see the rod of an almond tree he said you have seen correctly that means a man can see wrongly a man can perceive wrongly until you believe that when you are grafted into Christ through salvation through the new birth that there is no failure for you because you are one with Jesus you can fail alone but you and Jesus cannot fail together because you see we live in a world where people can interpret your destiny based on your background based on your past based on the disadvantages that may have surrounded your 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 sociological context but my bible and your bible says that we have been called out of every tribe out of every tongue out of every nation is a call to victory Joshua is about to begin to manifest the reality of his destiny and here was an instruction you would think the Lord would teach him about physical skill alone you would think the Lord would teach him about exceptional leadership principles as useful as that is look at the emphasis of God to Joshua one more time chapter 1 and verse 8 that a man's success starts with a book this book not this idea not this suggestion not what social media says this book of the law this book that contains the mysteries of the kingdom he says do not let it depart from your mouth you shall meditate therein consistently day and night means consistently and then having meditated upon it you must obtain grace to live in keeping with the truth therein it says if you do that it leaves you with a guarantee that your ways will be prosperous and you will have good success the real secret please hear me the real secret to an excelling life the real secret to a life of victory more than what you studied more than the advantage that family and territory can bring the real secret in this kingdom to a life of victory please hear me is the word of God the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 in the beginning was the word in the beginning where there was no professor where there was no internet where there was no politician where there was no stratification of any sort in the beginning was the word that means there is nobody who truly begins to succeed if you ignore the power and the supremacy of the word John chapter 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word I, I, I quoted John I meant to say forgive me Genesis 1 verse 1 says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth John 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word and that word was with God and the word was God hear what it says the same was in the beginning with God verse 2 verse 3 says it says all things everybody say all things shout it say all things all things means your promotion your influence your excelling 
your longevity, your prosperity, your dominion, your influence, all things were made by him. And without him, that means outside of the influence of the world, was not anything made that was made. The word of God is the maker of enviable destinies. It is true that we have been called into a life of victory, a life of grace. But listen carefully. Walking in the reality of that prophetic word depends on our encounter with the word of God. That means in as much as you have great prophecies over your life, it does not automatically mean that you will step into the reality of the same. Just because a prophetic word came over your life that you have a great destiny, that you have a beautiful destiny, just because the Bible attests to the fact that there is greatness within you, it does not mean that by default you will become great. You must have an encounter with the word of God. Now write this down very quickly. What is the word of God? Just a few minutes to begin as a background. What exactly is the Word of God? Because if you do not know what the Word of God is, then you may never be able to walk in the reality of the same. What is the Word of God? The Word of God referred to the thoughts and the intents of God. The Word of God, the word logos, where we translate as word means the thoughts of a man that seeks expression i will give you very quickly for sake of time three definitions of the word of god are you ready number one the word of god is an expression of god himself that's what the bible says in john chapter 1 verse 1 the bible tells us in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god the same was with god in the beginning in revelation chapter 19 when you read the bible talks about a rider upon a horse whose name was written on his thigh and his name is the word of god in first john chapter 1 verse 2 apologies i'm rushing because of time first john chapter 1 verse 2 the Bible also talks to us about the Word of God from the beginning, that which we have seen. So the Word of God is an expression of God Himself, an expression of the thoughts of God, an expression of the character of God. Number two, the Word of God represents the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. This is a very important definition. The Word of God represents the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. That means God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provision and the allowance that the Word of God provides. God is almighty. God is great. But He has limited His operation with man to the provisions that the word allows. The Bible declares that he exalts the word even above his name, above his reputation. The word of God represents the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. Number three, very quickly. What is the word of God? The word of God is a revelation of God's system of operation. His methodology, we call it the wisdom of God. The Word of God is a revelation of God's system of operation, His methodology. That means the Word of God reveals how God functions. It is the manual that shows you how God functions, His modus operandi, His system of operation. Are we blessed? Three definitions I've given you very quickly that the Word of God is an expression of God Himself, His thoughts and His character. Number two, that the Word of God represents the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. And then number three, that the Word of God is a revelation of His system. 
his methodology, how he walks. Now, I want you to write this down. Every time you open the Bible, principally, the Bible contains three things. Write it down, please. Everyone who is born again and a child of God must know this. These are foundational doctrines and pillars of the Christian faith that translate to your victory in this kingdom. The word of God contains three things. Every time you open your Bible, every time you study your Bible, there are three things that you are seeking for. Number one, the word of God contains promises. Please say promises and then you write it down. The word of God contains promises. What are promises? Promises represents God's commitment. The things that he has said he will do. Now you see, the way God works is that he never does what he has not said. If God has not said it, there is no basis for committing him to do it. Genesis chapter 21, please, and verse 1. Write it for reference. Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1. This is a prophetic word concerning what God did to Sarah. The Bible says, And the Lord visited Sarah, and he had said, And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. He visited Sarah as he has said. He did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Anything God has not said, anything God has not spoken cannot happen. There is no possibility for making it happen. Is someone learning now? So every time you pick up your Bible and you open it, hidden in this Bible are the promises of God. The old hymn says, standing on the promises of God. You can stand upon his promises. God, this is what you said concerning me. God, this is what you said concerning my destiny. There are promises in this scripture. For instance, the Bible says here, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say at the Lord. So he has said it. The thoughts of good or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Therefore, I have a future and I have an expected end. And I can place a demand on the integrity of God to make that happen. Why? Because he said it. Are you learning now? Now, please hear me. Many believers wish for a great destiny. They superstitiously hope that a great destiny will just appear. A great destiny is engaged by understanding. You have to know what God has promised you so that you can place a demand on it. Everybody say promises. Shout it, let the devil hear you say promises. There are many things that God had promised Joshua Selman here. I don't know about you, but the Bible is full of promises that God said concerning me. For instance, he says that the fullness of my days I will fulfill. So based on that promise, no power in existence sustains the ability to cut me short before my life. You have to believe this. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it is only what you believe that happens to you. I have believed from scripture, according to the promises of God, that nations, kings, Gentiles will come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Someone shout, I believe. The promises of God are dependable. The second thing we find from scripture, please write it down. The second thing we find from scripture are principles. Everyone write it and say principles. The principles of the kingdom are called the secrets of the Lord. The principles of the kingdom are called the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Matthew 13 and verse 11. Very quickly. Jesus was teaching and here's what he said it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven what is a mystery a mystery is a hidden body of truth 
that is privy to a group of people for instance in the military there are certain mysteries and languages that only a military man can understand am i right on that mysteries if you come into a man's house there is a way that they operate in that house the man does not need to announce to your hearing madam go and bring our visitor a bottle of minerals they have mysteries they have a way they communicate there is a way he can look at his wife and the wife understands what he's saying you who is a stranger will not understand but they who are in the house understand that mystery can i tell you this in this kingdom there are mysteries by which we rise for instance the bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meats and tends to poverty it's a mystery because if you are not in the kingdom you cannot understand why giving and increase is the same for instance in this kingdom you learn that you can dance your way to victory it's a mystery because it does not make sense until you are in the kingdom for instance in this kingdom we are taught that your words carry power and that you can speak life and use words to create your destiny is a mystery because anyone who is not a child of God and not in this kingdom cannot understand everybody say principles the assignment of the spirit of revelation is to come upon you and open you to the mysteries of the kingdom can I tell you this dominion is not an impartation dominion is your resultant the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries the principles of the kingdom if you do not understand the principles of the kingdom you will find out that you remain a victim of situations and circumstances influence and lifting has biblical principles for instance if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men to myself so when you focus on exalting Jesus, you focus on making his name known, you focus on letting people see him instead of you, your reward is that the more you lift him, you rise higher as he rises higher too. Are we together? So every time I'm giving you the keys very briefly before we pray, you want to live an excelling life, it is not by superstition it is not by hoping and wishing no you must search here for the principles of the kingdom contained in this bible are promises god's commitment to you contained in this bible are principles these principles are scattered in stories these principles are scattered in parables these principles are scattered in all kinds of theological exegesis. May you find these principles in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please look up. There is a principle that controls wealth and abundance. There is a principle that controls speed. There is a principle that controls restoration. There is a principle that controls exaltation. There is a principle that controls divine health. There is a principle that controls dominion over principalities and powers. My question tonight is which one do you not know? The Bible says in Psalm 82 and verse 5, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. But verse 7 says, you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. Everyone shout after me, say in the name of Jesus. From tonight, I obtain grace to know the principles of the kingdom. I obtain grace to know the principles of the kingdom. Please sit down. Twice Jesus cried in the Bible. Just a few minutes and we'll wrap up. There are two times we see that Jesus wept in scripture. Number one was in the book of John chapter 11. When you read from verse 35. He wept when he came to the grave of Lazarus. 
and they said oh how he loved him but the second time that Jesus wept in scripture was when he stood over Jerusalem and the Bible says he wept and said oh Jerusalem Jerusalem if you had known even in this day your time the things that make for your peace he says but they are hidden from your eyes can I tell you this every result you desire in this kingdom there is a mystery that connects you to it merely wanting the result will frustrate you you must find out the principle it takes apostle I want to be great I came from a family where no one has risen you are not the first ask Abraham Abraham came from a family of idol worshippers or of the Chaldeans but God called him Gideon from a family defeated family you are not the first to come out of a family of disadvantage apostle have lost everything through the pandemic you are not the first to lose ask job job lost everything but the bible tells us again in chapter 42 from verse 10 to 12 that God restored the fortunes of Job. Let me prophesy over someone here. Everything that has left you that should not leave you in this conference by the power that raised Christ from the dead, we call it back to your destiny. We call it back to your destiny. Please sit down. Can I tell you this? When you see our Father in the Lord stand like this, and declare over your life that in the name of Jesus it is well with you and it looks casual and doors open he's not just speaking there is a principle that supports what he's saying for instance where the word of a king is there is if you are not a king and you speak there will not be power the, before you speak verify whether you know the revelation the Bible says in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that he has made us a kingdom of kings and priests unto our God and we shall reign on earth. Can I challenge you therefore, utilize the moment of this conference. Don't just sit down and listen to speaker after speaker alone and close your book and go back. Cry unto the Lord and ask him, Lord, what principle do I not know that may be tying me down? What principle do I not know that is making the devil look victorious over my life? Your assignment in this conference is to be like a spiritual archaeologist searching for the missing link to the next level of your life. Number three, and we wrap up for tonight. The third thing we find in scripture are prophecies. Promises, principles, prophecies. Prophecies give us a roadmap to the future. Why? So that there will not be fear again as we leave. It gives us a roadmap to our own future here in this life and even in the life after. This is total victory for the believer. So we know that whether in this life or in the afterlife we still are victorious because we have searched the end of it and we have seen that even in the end according to prophecy we remain victorious this is the believers hope the Bible says if our hope is only in this life we are of all men most miserable so in as much as we excel and we reign in this life we have hope through prophecy the Bible lets us know that one day not a parable that it will happen we are going to hear the trump of God sound is it in your Bible or have you stopped reading it and it says that we the dead in Christ will arise first for instance and that we who are alive and remain we will be caught up and we will meet him in the air never to be separated again the bible by prophecy tells us that there will be a new heaven and a new earth hallelujah the bible tells us that a time is going to come where there will no longer be wars again where there will no longer be famine again where the wickedness of men will not find any expression again so it gives us hope everything that is happening in the earth today to the believer it should not be a surprise the bible already told us contained in scripture are principles contained in scripture 
our promise um, our, our promises and principles and prophecies can i tell you when you find the prophecies you can bring forth your strong reason when you find the principles you can obtain grace to walk in keeping with the principles the principles do not fail they are backed up by god's own integrity and then the promises give us hope and assurance so that we are not afraid we don't need to enter tomorrow to know what is there he already went as omega and he's brought back what tomorrow is and he's told us that we are victorious there is no anxiety there is no fear he's told us that we are victorious did he not say that a time will come when men say there is a casting down so he told you already that that time will come in Isaiah chapter 60 did he not tell you that a time will come when darkness will cover the earth and even gross darkness the people but he told you that upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise listen to me if you want exceeding expectation you want exceeding greatness a life that brings glory to the name of the, the Lord. A life that brings dignity to you. A life that wipes away shame and reproach from your life and your family. Can I be honest with you? Do not make the mistake of Martha. Martha was running around looking for so many things. And Jesus said, Martha, you are, this is, we live in a world where people are running from pillar to post ignoring God and pursuing connections and all these things only find their value if you if the Word of God is in place in your life running from everywhere searching for salvation I came tonight as a first session to lift up the Word of God to tell you again that this is not an ordinary book this was God's recommendation to a young man who was able to excel beyond imagination the Bible speaks about men who honor this word. Time will fail me, he says, to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. You can pay attention to what I've shared tonight and take it serious and begin to open this Bible searching for promises searching for principles that make for an exceptional life or you may fold it as an intelligent preaching from a man of God and not do anything with it because the Bible says they had the word just like we did but it says the word did not profit them not be mixed with faith in them that had it it says now that you know these things happy are you if you do them I'm hoping that the session that we have will have the time to share a few principles in detail because God is determined in this season to announce you God is determined in this season to see that everything that looks like reproach can I speak to you listen as I wrap up I want to tell you this do not let anyone talk you down and believe that just because you came from a background you came from a place where no one seems to have celebrated you nobody in your family has risen to another level and every time you aspire to rise so that jesus be glorified in your life the devil can come and speak to you and say who have you seen do this in your family can i tell you this by the grace of God, this conference seeks to not only give you enlightenment, but bring grace upon your life that moves you beyond your imagination. Can you spare one minute to pray? Please jump up on your feet. What is the prayer tonight? Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. This becomes our prayer as believers. One prayer point and we are done. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Apostle Paul is mentoring the church in Colossae. And he prayed a prayer for them, bowing his knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he mentioned three dimensions of knowledge. That must be the capture of our prayer tonight. That ye be filled, number one with the knowledge of his will number two ye be filled with all wisdom and number three ye be filled with spiritual understanding that if these dimensions are captured in your christian experience it is 
impossible for you to fail. You can fail if alone. But I said you and Jesus, you and the world cannot fail together. Say after me, Father. Shout it again. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace to contend for promises, for principles, for prophecies through the word of God. Lift your voice and pray. I obtain grace for the sake of my destiny, for the sake of my lifting. I obtain grace. I obtain grace to search for promises. The promises that represent the boundary of your commitment to my life. That God cannot be committed to the believer outside of what he has said. The promises of God are a capture of how far he can go to lift you, to bless you, to honor you, to reveal himself through you. And then principles, the ways of the kingdom, the modus operandi of the kingdom. Then prophecies that drive away fear, revealing your future to you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Now I pray for you tonight that in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, every promise of scripture that your eyes need to see that is connected to the next level of your destiny, this night, may my God open your eyes to see it. May my God open your eyes to see it some of you it will be revealed to you in dreams while you sleep may my god open your eyes to see it the principles that you may have ignored that may have been responsible for stagnations and limitations of all sorts in the name of jesus christ may the light of god's word come tonight and open your eyes to understand those principles Finally, every manifestation of fear in your life by reason of the uncertainties of tomorrow, I decree and declare, let it disappear from your life forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I apologize for taking our time, but as we have been taught by our Father in the Lord, it may not be just to wrap up this meeting without making a very serious altar call now please listen very carefully most people trivialize altar calls because they think it's just a religious activity can i tell you this it will be impossible to believe that everyone coming here has taken god seriously remember the formula genesis chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning god not in the beginning breakthrough not in the beginning prosperity i know we're out of time but someone's destiny for someone you may be the first person to make this decision in your family now hear me there are two categories of people i'm going to call the first is someone who came for this conference and you are saying apostle i have come sincerely i don't want to tell myself lies i need jesus i have not made this decision sincerely and number two there are those who will say i remember giving my heart to jesus christ but honestly, in the last one year, things have gone haywire my life. I cannot sincerely say I'm in a right relationship with Jesus. I'm going to count one to five. I'd like you to leave your seat if you belong to any of these categories. Run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here. One, are you celebrating them as they come? Run to Jesus. Two, by the time we count one to five, we'll stop there run with passion to jesus win that war of destiny tonight once and for all don't sit back being ashamed god is giving you a new beginning some of you are not just coming for yourselves you are coming for your family you are coming for your destiny are you running three run to jesus Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed of my colleague. Leave them alone and run to Jesus. I love you.
forever I love you forever I love you forever Lord I love you forever I love you forever I love you for if you're joining them please hurry up we're out of time I love you forever I love you forever I love you hallelujah now please listen to me all of you who are standing here I want you to mean it with Jesus let this not just be an emotional thing that you are just running to come the Bible says everyone who comes to him he will in no wise cast away lift your right hand high above your head and you who are watching from your homes you're watching via the internet you're watching through whatever platform you want to give your life to Jesus now is the moment of salvation I'd like you to join us as we pray this prayer lift your right hand high to heaven and I want you to say this loud and clear let it be from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem Jesus is here say after me Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I declare that I cannot help myself I come to you just as I am I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification tonight I accept you as my Savior I accept you as my Lord I accept you as my King the power of sin of Satan of hell and of the grave is broken over my life from today I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you for these ones they have come in response to this call no man is able to convict men except your spirit and we thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit even tonight I decree and declare according to the authority of Scripture that your sins are forgiven and I declare that my God gives you a new beginning from today the power of sin the power of Satan is broken over your life receive